Uh, we need to help out our sick people, but we need to make sure that we stay healthy. So use the proper sanitary procedures. Hey, did you find Paula? Sure, but she won't come here. She kind of hates me right now. <laughs> you, uh, kind of didn't mention that. I thought she'd be over that. Things on a roll the way they are. Hope she'd help us out. Once I said your name, she wouldn't even talk to me. What's Project Deus? Project Deus isn't the problem. The problem is, she can only see the harm it can do. Great to see you again. Great to see you too, sir. Lieutenant Colonel Walker, Paula Madeira. Please, call me Cole. Paula is Skeltech's most brilliant engineer. Now, now, I've seen your uh, designs, ma'am. I'd say that brilliant, that's an understatement. And I've seen your resume. It's heavily redacted. <laughs> Yeah. So I take it that, uh, that's not for the field test. No, that won't be ready for a few months. Wow. I want to ask you, the, uh, work you're doing on deep learning AI controlling these drones, how's that going? Excuse me? Using deep learning AI? How? Specifically, uh... Data mining, target identification. We haven't um, explored those options yet. <laughs> you mean to tell me that you have the top computer scientists in the world developing some sort of supercomputer and you uh, haven't explored those options yet? He's talking about Maddox. He's talking about Project Deus. Imagine it. Using this beast of a computer for predictive analytics. Finding terror threats, eliminating them with drones. You want to build a super intelligent computer, and the first thing you want to do with it is kill people? Oh, man. First thing I want to do is keep the free world safe. I'm sure that you, uh, well, you understand that. And who's going to keep the free world safe from Project Deus? <laughs> How could you? I want nothing to do with this. Don't... Just... Paula! <laughs> Jace... If she's truly brilliant... She'll come around. So you and Walker were pals, huh? Everyone was... Nomad. We need Paula's help. No one knows the system better than she does. I like you, genius. But some of your choices get people hurt. All the big choices do. Look, I know how to get her to help us. I'm listening. Two things. You need to find evidence on the explosion in my lab. You really know who did it? I'm almost certain the outcast did it. But you need to show Paula evidence on the explosive device itself. Second? You need to visit Paula's husband. She did not mention a husband. Look for him in Aurora Hospital. Nomad. This won't be easy for her. But after it's done, she'll know who to trust. All right. We need her help. Explain something to me, this Titan program. Why in the hell would you think it was a good idea to build giant killing machines? Aren't lethal drones enough? I recognize that smaller drones are already deadly and far more cost efficient, but I was influenced. 
Walker. He was always complaining that the existing drones didn't have enough media presence. These days, wars are fought on television screens. He wanted titans that could exude charisma and raise hope and simultaneously suffocate the spirit of a nation. Sounds charming. I find that once I'm given a task, my inspiration is fueled by the vacuum. I knew that what Walker wanted was entirely unnecessary for counterterrorism, but I got carried away. Now I shudder to imagine what he intended the whole time. You're not the only one. So, what does a billionaire arms dealer do? You know, whenever he's not manufacturing killing machines. Skeltech is responsible for an extensive catalog of inventions over the past decades. I'm listening. Our first economically viable autonomous machine was the Skel Farmer, a harvester capable of recognizing the range and ripeness of crops. Since then, it's found unintended utility in mining and forestry. So explain to me how you got here, from farming drones to war machines. Our next invention, the Skell Transporter, was the first affordable smart delivery device, a new standard in the industry. The Skell Doctor may interest you, an advanced cousin specialized to carry sensitive medical supplies. You could easily shoot one out of the sky to steal its payload. Could be useful. Our Cherubim City and Sky models behave like mobile CCTVs capable of facial and behavioral identification and alert authorities in real time. I suggest you steer clear of them if you want to move undetected. I'll keep that in mind. My point is that I have dedicated my life to improving the human condition, and relieving the population from the crushing weight of repetitive work. Well, let's see if we can make sure your legacy is intact at the end of this. Sometimes it seems like Harmony's the only Skeltech kid in Aurora. I don't know. We invited more people to Aurora who had children, but most of them turned us down. It was kind of great having Harmony around. Well, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. There ain't so many kids out in Aurora for me to worry about. Believe me, worrying about Harmony is enough. You two seem to get along. Yeah. She treats me like another kid. She's smart, but having her around helps me see things with new eyes. But aside from her dad, she has no one else here? No, just me. Listen, I get that Maddox isn't exactly warm and friendly. Why do people hate her? They don't hate her as much as they fear humanity's evolutionary destiny. Whoa. That's a little intense. Even for you. Grace Maddox is in charge of Skeltech's transhumanist research, Project Deus. Yeah, on a personal level, she's not, you know, fun. Yeah, she's also really into herself. Sure. She's really effective. I gave her a huge budget. She wants more. You give it to her? Ayana Puri, my CFO, wouldn't let me. So Maddox cut costs. Instead of spending the time to perfect a true quantum computer, she developed a DNA-based computer that behaves like a quantum computer. And you know what she's doing with that? She plans to download her mind onto that computer. I know it sounds a little crazy and unbelievable, but someone will do it. And she should be first. When did you get away from using dollars? You like the screds? I don't understand them. They're a cryptocurrency. As much as we could, we wanted to get away from the control of international banking. But it's a made-up money. All money is made up. It only has value because we all agree on it as a medium of exchange. Everyone in Aurora agrees to use screds. And Skeltech makes sure to create a limited supply. So if we all agree to use your play money instead of dollars, the economy still works the same way? Money's only worth what you think it's worth. My mind... blown. I 
I need more about Paula Madeira. How long have you known her? Years. I hired her right out of grad school. Actually, she was still in grad school. She was only 20, but she was just so smart. I knew that with her, I could lay the foundation of Skeltech's advanced drone program. But are you friends? Was there something else going on, or what? There's something here I'm missing. I think hiring her so young, she never really learned the art of adapting. She didn't like working with Walker. I could have handled her differently. I know I need to talk to her about that. You didn't answer my question. It hurt. She was so special and one of the first to truly believe. And in hindsight, she was also right. She saw right through Walker. She was immune to his charm. I was deaf to her warnings. How did you buy Aroa in the first place? I didn't buy it. I leased it. Aroa is technically part of New Zealand, but the U.S. had leased it for years. Yeah. That's why there's the old naval station. But wouldn't it have been easier to rent a chunk of California or something? I'm sure there's a big stretch of Mojave that nobody wants. Yeah. The abandoned naval station here piqued our interest initially, hoping we could piggyback on the Cold War infrastructure. That was a wash. But once we had visited Aroa, its biodiversity won us over. Good Hope Mountain has ice, Infinity is surrounded by fields, and the swamps of Finn Bog sport as harsh a conditions as any good drone tester could wish for. We fell in love with the place. I bought the lease from the U.S. government. And now these are your islands. No government but Skeltech. Well, avoiding government regulation was a factor. Oh, I'll bet it was. Hey, I've been hearing about that World 2.0 stuff. And maybe the world needs a software patch, but a utopia? Really? People out there and the rest of the world, they think the Earth's dying. They have this belief in scarcity. They think that we'll run out of energy, out of space, or out of water, or anything. And that makes every day a crisis. And World 2.0 would fix that crisis? It was more about fixing that mentality. I wanted to show the rest of the world that with innovation, with creativity, and with a little courage, it's easy to see the universe is abundant. And how about now? It's still an abundant universe. That hasn't changed. Just, I thought I could keep out jealous people and the cowards. No getting away from them. No. I'm probably not as brave as I want to be either. A genius. I always thought you were more of a pacifist. Gotta say, though, it's a damn shame you had to start making lethal drones. I was naive, I guess. I was hope for the best out of people, you know? When a bomb goes off and I meet the wrong person at the worst time, I bought their logic that if you want peace, carry a big stick line of reasoning. Stone even said, doesn't God have his avenging angels guarding the gates of paradise? It never felt right here. We're building heaven on earth. And we're not gods. Is that why you kept it secret, Project Omega? Because, you know, some people might look at it as a PR shield, keeping the image of a pacifist while making money on weapons. PR is important, but you don't wear a seatbelt because you're planning to get into a car crash, right? You have to be cautious. Right. Hey, did Fox tell you who his inside source might be? Now, I don't want to press him. I'm not even 100% that he has one. But if that source gets into trouble, he could need someone to help out. He hasn't told me. And I doubt he would respond well to a man with a gun asking him the question. Hey, you don't have to tell me. Just as long as you know. I don't know. And it's not like him to be quiet about anything. I mean, the things that guy told me about his ex-wife? It was like listening to a guy describe a squid eating a chocolate birthday cake. Nobody needs to hear that. So if he is keeping the secret, it must be pretty big. Must be. Hey, what's the deal with this chick on all the video screens? Ayana Puri. Yeah, my CFO. I guess she's just, uh... 
fulfilling her regular job duties, sharing the company news. Yeah. Did you see the one where she said I was crazy? Having a mental breakdown or something? It's not a bad propaganda campaign. She's not as smart as she thinks she is. Her strategies were always traditional. She's never had any real vision. So why keep her? She seems so genuinely concerned about the employee's welfare. Now I see she's just playing office politics. She's more clever than smart. She's effectively taken over as CEO. Fox called you his best friend. Yeah, I never thought about it, but I guess he's mine too. Times like this, you can count your real friends on one hand. Have you known him a while? Your buddy from college or something? No. A few years ago, I hired him as a consultant. He was working on the problem P versus NP. That literally means nothing to me. It's a math problem. One of the math problems. But Fox was just so enthusiastic about everything, I widened the scope of his role. He was involved in every non-military project Skeltech had. He's a good guy to have around. Absolutely. This guy, Trey Stone, doesn't make things easy. He always seemed kind of ambitious. He and Walker always had some friction. Walker mentioned Stone before, but never in a friendly way. I take it he isn't very likable. He's a creep. But I've had to work with all kinds of people before. Sometimes you tolerate jerks just because they get the job done. Did he get the job done? I don't actually know. He kind of insulated himself. As a subcontractor, I couldn't supervise him the way I did other people. I had to trust Walker when he said things were going well. How well did you know Walker? Well, we fixed things together. He was a military advisor brought in after the Skeltech bombing. We were still in mourning for the friends we lost. And then this hero shows up. He was... He was magnetic. Charismatic, you know? Like a... TV star or something. Yeah. That guy could charm the fleas off a dog. He kind of changed after he left the unit. He never spoke about it. Well, it's top secret. Let's just say it wasn't pretty. Genius. What's this thing keeping people in Aroa? The drone perimeter. We're calling it Operation Citadel. I think Walker came up with the name. Any weak spots? The perimeter is made up of different interlocking sectors, and each sector has its own drone swarm. Each swarm is managed by an AI that runs through a local relay terminal. I can see that system working for surveillance, but it took out my chopper without firing a shot. The swarms, they... They're made up of dozens of miniature drones that act in unison, like a flock. You made an artificial bird strike? No. We made artificial birds to do the job of bees. Pollination. It's Stone and Walker who militarized our swarms to create a deadly shield perimeter. Who thinks like that? People after power. Skeltech needs to start thinking more like its clients. Stay out of trouble. Focus is my forte.
Any word on Sigrid? I told her. Everybody told her. You should see this. As a leader of the organization known as the Outcast, Dr. Sigrid Bloom stands accused of espionage, damage to property, terrorism, apology for terrorism, technocide, collusion with foreign powers, and calling for civic unrest. Under the extraordinary circumstances of martial law, the Sentinel Tribunal sentences her to death. God damn it. Where was this video made? We might have time. They already carried out the sentence. Gibson reached out to me via a dead drop we set up when I was still part of Sentinel. Gibson? He and Stone never got along. I kept him up to date on what Stone was doing. But Gibson and Stone have had an official falling out. Official how? Gibson officially got a plane ride off Aroa. <sighs> well, shit. Listen, we can send my evidence of Sentinel's crimes to the US government. He already set up a meet. I don't trust him. Gibson's not like Stone. If this goes right, it could mean ending this occupation. All right. But we need to meet Gibson on our terms. Snatch and grab. Get Gibson out of Camp Fox and then meet me and Haruri at a neutral RP. Then he can take my intel and board that plane. Simple. Yeah. Something like that. <sighs> so Project Deus, that sounds ominous. What can you tell me? Look, I'd really prefer not to talk about it. I get that you're not a fan, but why all this? A rebellion over a rich guy's pet project. It doesn't track. What's there to track? Apparently, during their giant asshole convention, the meatheads at Skeltec came up with a way to cheat death. Project Deus is their elitist method of transferring the minds of the richest 0.1% into computers. It's not hard to figure out where that leaves the rest of us. So excuse me if I'm a little pissed off. Jesus. Surviving death by living on as a machine doesn't sound much like surviving to me. Me either. It's in the name, Brute Squad. Project Deus isn't about cheating the god of death, it's about becoming him. For these people, it means absolute power. That's what the outcasts are fighting against. I'm sorry, Haruhi. Sigrid was special. They're all looking at me like I've got some answer. Sigrid should be here, not me. What the hell am I supposed to... God damn it, I'm barely holding it together. So much for my Brute Squad merit badge, huh? Look, I get it. Sigrid casts a long shadow. But you took this job long before she died. And you took it because you knew she couldn't be the leader the outcast needed. In the end, there's only one thing she had over you. She understood that it wasn't enough to be against something. She needed to share a vision with those people so they could see the light at the end of the tunnel. God damn it, Brute Squad. You get that from a t-shirt? Thanks. Seriously. I think I needed that. Time to get back to work. Let me ask you something. Why South Cape Station? 
Liberty's right next door, and it wouldn't take much for Sentinels to surround you and cut you off from everything. It's rare that outcast cells stay put more than a few days. Nature of the beast, I guess. With this place, we were just looking for something more permanent where we could stockpile supplies and safeguard assets. The landfill keeps away Sentinel and Skeller tourists from the capital. We're right near to our fields of operation and close enough to Sentinel that we won't show up on radar. As far as security is concerned, the creek does a decent job of keeping us hidden, and looking out at the cabins is a bonus. How does Sentinel Corp take control of Varroa? Skell hired them to deal with us initially once he realized that he had some resistance against transhumanism, his own private militia. They started making arrests, so a few of us went to ground and our sympathizers followed, thinking they'd leave us alone once we were outside of the cities. But they didn't. Stone got permission to operate outside Liberty and Infinity, and Skell let him set up shop in the Cold War installations to patrol the wild. Once they got there, they did just enough to keep us at bay, while using us as cover to bring in men and vehicles, which he hid from Skell in some underground bunkers. Which, of course, are now called Camp Ferret and Camp Weasel. Son of a bitch has a sense of humor. We were watching the whole thing happen. And when they grew strong enough, they took over. They literally came up out of the ground. Skell had no idea what hit him. If I was looking for a fight, where should I go? With Sentinel Corp? You that hard up? Trigger Finger needs its exercise. Well, Sentinel patrols the city centers and industrial complexes pretty heavily, though there's always civilians around, so I'd keep away from those if you can help it. Then there's the settlements they built when they first got here, in the southwest and northeast, where they keep their reserve garrison and store resources. That sounds like more fun than anybody should be allowed to have. If you're looking for more of a skirmish, you could check out one of Oroa's many Cold War-era bunkers left courtesy of Uncle Sam. They also set up some transportable structures and took over some scale architecture. Basically, if you see a green storage container-looking thing, Sentinel's probably nearby. Of course, if you don't feel like looking that hard, they patrol most of the island 24-7, so you could just pick a spot and wait. How goes the ad campaign? Can't argue with results. Gotta hand it to Sigrid. What do you think's gonna finally get the civilians off the sidelines? At first I was thinking of replaying the speech, but it's long. So we put our heads together and came up with some slogans and catchphrases. A couple pictures and videos that are hard to ignore. The plan's to send them through email and social feeds. One of my favorites is to take a scale invention and ask the viewer if it'd be cool for some historical villain to have the same invention. If not, then why let Sentinel Corp have it? Exactly. How do the outcasts manage to sustain themselves out here? Barely. None of us have the skills or equipment to farm or fish. Even if we did, it'd bring us a boatload of attention that we couldn't afford. Once in a while, a civilian will leave some food at a dead drop, but it's risky and never much. Best bet's always to steal from farms and raid sentinel supplies, but of course they're protected. Then there's still the matter of getting the supplies out to as many cells as possible while avoiding detection. Nobody thinks about food at first. That's why so many groups who call themselves revolutionaries end up as bandits. Even if you don't think it's possible now, you'll want to be careful you don't drift that way. Can you tell me why Sentinel's got a prison set up in the survival shelter complex? Nope, never been. Never planned to either, but I've heard about it. Given Skell's vision, it doesn't seem too far-fetched. An illegal prison in a remote fortress, on top of a mountain, surrounded by ice and snow where no one in their right mind would go looking? No offense. None taken. But the size of the place, it's insane. It looked like you could fit a rose whole population in there. I can't see a scenario where Sentinel would use all the space, but clearly they were thinking big, which gives one pause. Well, I retired Herzog, who was running the place, but I'm sure that's not gonna do anyone any good. We'll just have to see. How do you manage to keep so many combat supplies for the Rebellion? Well, Sentinel keeps a close eye on frags, C4, and landmines, so they're an unholy bitch to get. Most of our explosives are homemade from flashbangs or diversion grenades we find hanging around security facilities. If you want the good stuff, you're gonna have to raid Sentinel outposts. With any luck, you might be able to find a stash in the Cold War installations, but even those tend to have a sentinel infestation problem. Well, in the past life, I was an exterminator. Any advice for fighting a World 2.0? 
The name of the game is take out their drones faster than they can launch them. It's a bitch, but that's why we always carry jammers that'll shut off any live drone or vehicle happening by. At least for a while. Another option would be to make your peace with the devil and use sink shot drones to take out specific targets. Sink shot drones? They only target humans, though. They can't target drones. There's also a variation on the Legion drone, the ones in the drone swarm. They're like little flying guns that basically take aim in any direction and wait for a signal to execute their target. Got any lying around? No can do. We mostly leave those things alone. Kind of goes against what we're trying to be. Sounds like just another weapon to me. If you're inclined, you can get them hot out of the oven from Skeltech Labs or assembly lines. Hell, even some startups might have them. And come to think of it, the Omega Center ought to have plenty. See you later, Haruhi. Not if I see you first, Brute Squad. I just want this all to be over. Hello there. I could really use your help finding this place. I know where it's located, what you're looking for. Thanks a million.
how you thought I'd be my own. I still can't believe that operation even worked. Getting our message out like that is huge. Have you seen the bullshit sentinels peddling on the news? Be all right. all the spin? I just want this all to be over. What are you doing with all this?
soon. Slow down. We got bad guys. Give you a better look. Now we have an advantage over him. All day, baby. There's a whole swarm of them. Ever wonder how the auto gun turrets work so well? I mean, they're freaking lethal, dude. Okay, let me see what we got here. This will help. Scan shows a ton of hostiles. Outstanding. I can't believe the outcasts would try something like that. <sighs> Scanning the area. At least we're not going in blind. What's, what's that noise? Wait, how strange is that? Let's go look. Stay vigilant. Many hostiles will scan. Some bad guys in the area. You know what to do. Stay alert. Roger, moving. Uh, I got a feeling we're not alone. <laughs> Prepared to fire. I don't got them, boss. They're here. Okay, we have to find them. Some bad guys in the area. You know what to do, stay alert. They're here. Okay, we have to find them. No, no, no. Uh, I got a feeling we're not alone. Okay, we have 
David Madeira was transferred to the Eternity Center. I guess I better head over there. some bad guys in the area you know what to do stay alert Get a much better look at him. Oh, be careful. Sniper up ahead. Roger, moving to target. I can't get any reception out here. Could be worse. Ready, boss. Could be me. I'm supposed to take out the hostile. Got him. They're down. Solid work.
Target. We're set. Ghost lead. Hostiles in the wind. Who are you? Hi. No need to be afraid. I'm looking for this place. Can you point me in the right direction? Here's the location of what you're looking for. Thanks. Much obliged. <laughs> 